Hey everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Pear Blossom Press video. Today we're going to be using the Easy Light and I'm going to show you how I messed up one of my Easy Lights and um, how I used it for this card because this was perfect for it. We're going to pair it up with the candle flames from HAI Supply that Amanda carries in the store. These things are amazing. I love using them on candles. And this is the Vault Festivory Thinlets. It's the Tim Holtz by Sizzix. And it's a really great die. As soon as I saw it, I knew I needed to have it. We're also going to pair that up with our Trinity Stamps Simply Sentimental Christmas Stamps and Dies and then this Scrapbook.com Holiday Patterned Paper. Um, typically with one of those Thinlets, you'd probably, you know, make a distressed background, but I decided let's just mix and match all the things today. And so I really love this paper pad and had to have it. It's the six by eight paper pad. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pair it up with that first pattern paper that you see in this. I really love those green with the stars. The stars just made me think of light up. So we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. To save a little time, I did die cut out all of my pieces and I did die cut them out of white. I like doing that sometimes because, especially if there's a lot of little ones and then be a lot of die cutting. It just makes it a little bit simpler sometimes. You just have to color them yourself. You can do that with alcohol markers. You can do that with pretty much any medium you have, watercolor, whatever, depending on what paper you die cut these out of. I die cut them out of just plain white paper because I am going to ink blend on them. I put those on top of my waffle flower grip mat, which is perfect for little pieces like this. And I am just blending on some ink. And I'm gonna, I, I've already increased my speed double here. Pretty soon I'm gonna increase it about eight because all it is is just putting those down on the grip mat and coloring those up. I don't have the colors for you because in all honesty, I kind of got in the mode of just coloring and I was listening to an audio book and really you use whatever colors you want. Here I'm obviously using a darker brown for those. We'll bring in plenty of different greens for this. I think bundled sage was in there. Um, we also had peeled paint and uh, maybe, well, to be honest, I think that one was a, a olive color and then we even had some blue greens in there as well. We're going to move on to the candles. I think I used some antique linen for those and then we've got various different oranges for our orange slices. I just think this is such a cool die set and I feel like it could be used for more than just the wreath, but I really, really love the wreath. This wreath I think could also be used with one of the halo lights, depending on how you cut it. That would be pretty fun. But since it has the candles on there, if you wanted to use the candles like I do, it works perfectly with those easy lights. But if you didn't put the candles on there, that'd be pretty neat with the halo light as well. So we're just gonna finish up. Should have used the black all across that piece because that is a background piece, but live and learn. All right, so now we're going to start piecing everything together and I'm using liquid glue and some reverse tweezers to do this. And I've kind of just downgraded my speed here for a little bit because uh, there's a lot to put together. And if you don't like tiny dies, this is probably not one for you. Uh, I love doing stuff like this. This and coloring are my happy place because I can just kind of zone out and do it. And I loved all of the little elements and how they can all be pieced together and how you can make so many different things because there are so many different elements. You can make this wreath look however you want. Obviously the packaging gives you some, some examples, which is kind of great, but you can do it however you want. And I think I mostly stuck with the same color combo that they had. Maybe not. Your candles could be any color you wanted. Um, yeah, and of course it has the flame. I did not do the flame and I do end up cutting off the tops of these flames, but those are there so that you can put the candle flame over the top of it, the, um, the die cut piece. So we're just going to finish up all of those little pieces, the poinsettia, put it however you want. Most of these dies do have embossed edging, so it makes it easy to put them together, but there's a lot of forgiveness in them as well, especially like this poinsettia, put it together however you want. Same thing goes with the orange slice. Uh, there is a way to do it. There is some embossed lines on there, but if you don't get it perfect, it's going to work out fine too. I think that's what one of the things I love about these Tim Holtz dies is that they're pretty forgiving. I don't have a lot of them, but I really loved this one and knew I had to get it. 
So now we'll do our little pine cones. As you can see, I die cut out a couple of those. I'm going to end up putting some of these pieces on the inside of my card as well. I really like doing that. Kind of brings the outside in. And then just using my pickup stick to piece down the smaller bits. Pick it up with that wax end and stick those down. And then we also have the holly berries and their leaves. And I did do a couple of those as well. But sky's the limit. You could just do all holly berries all over this background. You could do nothing but pine cones. So you make your wreath look however you want. I did like how they had it on the outside of the packaging. So I mostly stuck to that. Took a little bit of creative liberty there. But... Like I said, these types of things are just super fun for me. And then that's, once we get those on there, we can start piecing our card together, which is, of course, the most fun part, right? Seeing it all come together. All right, so I'm going to trim down my paper. I'm actually going to trim it to be four and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. And the reason for that is this is going to be a horizontal uh, top folding a two size card and I did want a little bit of a white border on that right side I'm gonna have to do all of the assembly on the outside first because then I can know exactly where I need my lights to be so we'll bypass some of this because it'll get a little bit tedious with me playing around with how I want those on there and all the gluing and everything but we'll put our wreath down sticking that mostly to the left hand side and then I realize at this point, I do need to know where my sentiment's gonna go before I actually put anything else on the wreath. So I've die cut out just using the Simply Sentimental Christmas, the die set, which you could get separate, or I mean, uh, completely by itself if you wanted to, since all those dies will not only cut out the words, but the, they cut out the shadows as well. But I like having the combo because it goes so well together. And we're just going to put a little glue on that background or on the the die cut piece and then we'll stick it down to the white shadow and once that down i'm going to stamp out the sentiment that's going to go above it and that simply sentimental christmas has so many great christmas sentiments with it we'll go ahead and glue it down because i know where it's going to go But the sentiment I've chosen is have yourself a merry little. I'll ink that up, stamp that down on some more white cardstock, and then we're just going to trim that down using our guillotine trimmer. And then I can kind of play around with how that's going to look on the top. I do decide I want some of that sticking off the edge going all the way to the edge of the card. And remember, we cut off a quarter inch on that one side. So I'm going to wait to put that down. And I'll start piecing together the rest of the wreath. It's such a pretty die. And I feel like you could use this for spring as well, using some of those, maybe not the um, holly berries, obviously, or the poinsettia, or even these pine leaves. But if you used some of the little flowery bits, like the berry type looking ones, that'd be pretty fun. And you could still have it be something for spring. This is where I decide I have to trim off the tops of the candles so we just have our wicks showing. That'll just make it easier for when I pierce the holes for our lights. And then we're going to increase our speed quite a bit because it's just me putting down all of the pieces for our wreath. And those reverse tweezers come in super, super handy. If you don't have a pair, I highly recommend getting some. But all those little elements are just so much fun that I wanted to do all of them and put them all on. <laughs> all right, so now I can kind of decide how that's going to go on the top of the card. But I'm going to pierce my holes and I'm using the back of that paper piercer or a pickup stick. And then I can use a pencil to mark exactly where the lights are going to go. You notice I only poked two holes because we're only going to use two lights. And the reason for that is, well, there's two candles on here, but I also had messed up when I was making a card once before. I was using these lights and I had put them down and I started putting down my foam tape 
and I ended up cutting one of the lights by accident. I was so upset with myself, but I was like, I'm not messing, I'm not going to throw this away. I, you know, it, the light still works. It just is missing one of the lights. As you can see, I trimmed it off. So as long as you just cut like the one blue and red, you can still use these lights. And so I'm going to trim that down just a little bit more because we don't need that one to be quite as long. I'll do that eventually. But for now, I'm just going to take some regular clear scotch tape and I'm going to adhere these down over the tops of those dots that I used my pencil with. So I'm just making sure those are face up and I will tape those down using that tape. This tape is a little bit long and I had a little bit of a PTSD moment, a little bit of a flashback <laughs> of trimming my light once before. So I was trying to be extremely careful. So as you can see, there it is. And this is where I'm like, well, we can trim that light down even more. We don't need that much of it. So I can chuck those, those uh, wires. And now I'm just kind of playing around with where I need my light to be, my button. And so I'm going to end up putting some liquid glue behind it. And then we will adhere down our battery pack. And then we'll use some more of the scotch tape to just you know, corral the rest of those wires and just tape that down to the back. No one's going to see it. So I usually am not that cognizant of how it looks back there because no one's going to see it. So lights are still working. Everything's good. I'm bringing in my world's best foam tape. Yes, I have used the heck out of that world's best foam tape. Don't worry. I have another roll. So I'm really excited about that. We're all good. Um, but this stuff is the world's best. You'll see why if you've never seen it before. I'm just trimming all the way around and this ends up working perfectly. The amount that I have left works perfectly for this card. So I'll just, there it is. And then I'll peel off the release paper. That's one reason why it's such a great tape. The release paper comes off so super simply. The other reason is that it's repositional for, repositionable for about 30 minutes. So I put that down and I realize my holes are not big enough. I don't like that. So I'm going to peel this back and I'm going to make my holes a little bit bigger and it didn't ruin my paper. It didn't ruin what I had done and I can just stick that right back down and it's all good. And you can see those lights a little bit better. I'm going to adhere down that sentiment using a little bit of liquid glue. And again, I wanted that to go just beyond to the very edge of our card. So it does stick off the green pattern paper and that's okay with me. And that looks good. And then we can bring in those HAI supply candle flames which again are absolutely perfect for any sort of candles i like that there are different sizes in this bag and amanda does carry them in the store so if you like making light light up cards at all i think these are a must not only are they just really cool on the card but they will magnify the light even better so now that they're on there take a look at how they look now they look like legit candle flames it's so pretty then I need to bring in my Pear Blossom Press stamp set. We're almost done with this card. We need to, to do our push button and we also are going to stamp on the back. So I'm using that one light bulb stamp from the Pear Blossom Press, Pear Blossom Press stamp set, inking that up, stamp it down, and then I'll use my little personalized stamp on the bottom. And then I've stamped out the press here. And then we're just going to trim that with our scissors. If you don't trust yourself, use a guillotine trimmer or any sort of paper trimmer that you have. But I'm just going to trim around that since it's small enough. And then we'll adhere that down over the button of our card using some more liquid glue. And I did do a little bit on the inside. You'll see that here when I show off this card. But once that's on there, that's going to finish off this card entirely. I love, love, love this card. I definitely want to make more of these for those special people. But isn't that neat? Those candles legitimately look like little candles on there. And there's our inside. And that's my card. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And be sure to check out all that Pear Blossom Press has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.